السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي بيده تتم الصالحات وأصلي وأسلم على الحبيب المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين وبعد All praises belong to the Almighty Allah May his peace and blessings be upon the Prophet of Islam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household followers and all those who follow the path of Allah to the day of judgment we thank Allah for giving us the first day of Ramadan and as we promised in our delivery yesterday we shall be looking at the moral lessons that could be drawn from Ramadan fast but to start with, let me just quickly indicate how Ramadan is started. And the clue is very simple. The Prophet says, that fast when you see the moon meaning on the 29th of Sha'ban which was two days ago on Wednesday 22nd of April as per the instructions of the Prophet Muhammad we just have to search for the sighting of the moon the Prophet said if we are unable to sight the moon because of bad weather then we should count Shaban 30 days, which was yesterday. So today has signaled the beginning of this great month. This particular month, once it started, and we shouldn't forget it started yesterday night with the Taraweeh, and it is going to continue for the next 29 or 30 days. It is a great month. It is a month of hope. It is a month of compassion. It is a month of forgiveness. Hear the wonderful words of the Messenger of Allah. He says, Man Sama Ramadana Imanan Wahtisaban Ghufira Lahu Ma Taqaddama Midambi. That anyone who does the fast of Ramadan <clears throat> without tainting it with any ill character, that person gets all his sins forgiven. What a wonderful opportunity. For one's life to be transformed, for the self to be reborn, for a new path to be pursued. In another narration by Abu Huraira, the Prophet says that when Ramadan sets in, the doors of heaven are open and the doors of hell are closed. The first moral lesson we'll be looking at in respect of Ramadan. It's lesson number one, moral lesson number one. The purpose for which Ramadan fast has been instituted by Allah. In some religions, religious practices are left to scholars to determine and purposes of actions and rights are sometimes determined by scholars of that particular religion. Islam is not like that. When the Prophet of Islam gave out his farewell sermon on the mountain of Rahmah, on the land of Arafah, 
He directed Muslims to hold on to the Quran and his Sunnah, that is his utterances and practices. Consequently, the institution of Ramadan is a divine one and its purpose has been determined by the Creator himself. Just humbly listen to the words of Allah. In Quran chapter 3, verse 180, Quran chapter 2, verse 183. Just reflect on the words used by the Creator. And He says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qabrikum, la'allakum tattakul. That fasting has been made incumbent upon you as it was made so for those who lived before you so that you will acquire the fear of Allah. In another linguistic dimension of the expression is to get or to attain closeness to Allah. And of course piety is implied because if one attains closeness to Allah, it means the person has a taqwa. In lesson number one, we'll be looking at the meaning of a taqwa. The root of that word, a taqwa, is al wiqaya That is, to protect oneself from something. And Imam Mustafa Rafi says that a taqwa in, this, in its linguistic sense means an effort to create a barrier between you and the hell or the punishment of Allah. Imam Ali bin Abi Talib insightfully defines a taqwa, the fear of Allah, in the following manner. And he says, Al Khawfu Mil Al Jalil to fear the Almighty. He gave four definitional dimensions of Ataqwa. So the dimension, the first dimension is Al Khawfu Mil Al Jalil to fear the Almighty. The second dimension he says is to believe in the revelation of the Quran. And then the third dimension is that is to be satisfied with the little that one has. And then the fourth dimension is al istidad lil we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as we are fasting and we are tilting towards the end of day number one, we ask Allah to shower his blessings on our hearts, to shower his blessings on our spirits, to shower his blessings on our minds, and in a nutshell, on our whole body. He is the owner of everything. He is the owner of all spaces. He is the protector of every living thing. And he is the source of nourishment for every living thing. He forgives sins. He shows his compassion in a manner that he wishes. And therefore we ask him, to bless every day of this month for us to help us use every moment in this month to do acts that will bring us closer to him who is you that's ramadan number one and we shall continue with the explanation on the meaning of atakwa tomorrow 
by his grace and power assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh